We begin today with maybe the one Republican who was smiling on election night this week. Yeah, he won his election handily, but he was also the Republican with a different kind of message. Senator John Bramnick joins us now. Senator, welcome back to Roundtable. Good to be with you, Dave. So your party took it on the chin bad this week, losing assembly seats and failing on what was really a key election night for them. What happened? Well, you can't be crazy as a Republican. You can't deny legitimate elections. You can't ignore January 6th. You have to be reasonable. You have to make sense. And in my district, which is a Democratic district, I won by 10 points. And here's why. I'm nothing special, but they don't love Joe Biden. They don't love Phil Murphy, but they're worried about the Republicans. They don't trust us. What happened in Summit in Westfield, we put up trustworthy candidates who weren't crazy, who weren't election deniers, who weren't uh, spewing hate at the other side, weren't using sound bites uh, where you're mad at the hate the Democrats. We sounded like normal people. And guess what? That's all that voters want. Some normalcy in the Republican Party. So if you want to just hate Democrats and you want to spew hate, you're going to lose. I don't care about vote by mail. That's just an excuse. Uh, what the concern is, is the image and brand of the Republican Party. And if we don't change it, we'll always be in the minority. So what's the message? All right. Don't talk about Trump and stop yelling at people. But what else does your party have to do to regain the trust? Well, everybody knows we're a fiscally conservative party. What they don't know is whether or not we're going to do crazy stuff the way Trump did. What they don't kind of trust crazy Trump. stuff? Like what? Well, what does he do? First of all, he comes across and yells at people. He says he's going to suspend the Constitution, right? He says the election wasn't real. Uh, he says, well, January 6th was nothing, and he didn't stop January 6th. That's pretty crazy. Yeah. And that is the image of the Republican Party in New Jersey. And in New so, Jersey, if image, we lose. So has the has your party been hijacked? This used to be the party of, of, of Tom Kane Sr., that's exactly right. It used to be the party of Tom Kane so Sr. So who hijacked it? Who hijacked who it? Who hijacked it? There's an image because our leader is still, and I don't like him, Donald Trump. So people go in, swing voters go in, they go like this, you know, I'm not crazy about that Democrat in that district, but you know something? I don't trust the Republican. He's And look what happened in Washington. We couldn't find a speaker. And then we find a speaker who's an election denier. Mm -hmm. You think that helps us win swing districts in New Jersey when you have le when when a fellow like Jordan gets a lot of votes down there? Come on. I mean, so, that, that's the image of the Republican Party. We got to change it. So who in New Jersey? I mean, do I, I see Republicans posting online that there need to be there needs to be consequences to this big loss this week. Should there be some changes made at the state Republican committee? Act like Vince Palestina. Vince Palestina won Atlantic City. That's a swing district, right? He did it because he's not crazy, doesn't act crazy. People trust him. I won District 21. We have candidates who can win and they can win statewide. So, but, but, the, but does the Republican Party in the state need some changing. Is there someone uh, who should replace the current leadership who is more receptive to the message that you're uh, putting out there? First of all, the Republican Party is not one entity. Yeah, It is a combination of many different districts. And in some districts, Trump plays well. I don't criticize those people. But statewide and swing districts want Republicans that are fair-minded, not spewing hate, uh, not hating Democrats. Yep, I get all of doing that. Their job I, and I get all results. of those. I get all of that. But, but there, there's a, a committee, a, a Republican state committee, that drove this message. They drove it to most of the districts, uh, and that leadership of of the party. Some are saying that there needs to be changes there. This is kind of a, a yes or no question, Senator. Do there need to be changes at the state? Uh, party committee. 
I don't think they dictate what we say in each election. I don't think they set the agenda. Each senator or assembly person sets the agenda. They may get a suggestion from somebody, but the bottom line is we decide as individual senators how to sell our brand. And I'm going to tell you, our brand has to change. If that means uh, leadership wants to follow my lead in terms of a reasonable approach, you know, I can't stand this sound bite type thing that Republicans are mad at the Democrats. We hate the Democrats. They don't care about that. They want to know who you are. Are you authentic? Are you going to respect the court decisions? Are you going to respect, uh, respect the institutions uh, in our country like the FBI and, uh, and the courts? Or, or you can just sit back and criticize everything and then people won't trust you. I'm going to, I'm in plan A. Plan A is authenticity, anti-Trump, pro-voter, pro-citizen. Okay. So here you are, 70 year old. You look great, by the way. Uh, uh, we, we hear every four years, oh, Bramnick's going to run for governor. Here we are again, another uh, cycle. Uh, is Bramnick going to run for governor finally? I mean, time Bramnick, is of the essence here, no? Bramnick is going to tell you very soon, okay, but this time I have a four-year term as a senator. In the past, I had a two-year term. I, I could run this year and lose a primary or lose a general election, and guess what? I'll still be around selling the same message of civility, honesty, fairness, and not not spewing hate around the state. So you look forward the next couple of months to my potential announcement. How's that? Well, that's insufficient for our purposes, Senator, but I, I understand what you're saying. Um, you say you're going to take your message across the state. Um, you're from District, what is it, 21, right? District That's 20? right. Yeah. So you're going to go beyond District 21. You're going to go way down south to uh, uh, what used to be Ed Durr country is now John Bersicelli country um, to all the way up to the Parker Space uh, parts of the state saying, what, make me governor and I'll bring civility back to my party? No, I'm going to say first you have to win to stop the Democrats from moving far to the left. If you don't win... You can't change anything. So who is the most electable person statewide? Now, if we get to that point where I make the announcement, I would make the announcement that we need somebody who's electable, not somebody who's just throwing red meat to Republicans around the state, and then they lose. We lose, we lose, we lose. So bottom line is, do you want to win or not? That's my message. All right. So th this um, statewide tour, uh, which is not officially a tour, I guess, but you say you're taking your message statewide, is does your decision to run for governor come from what you hear on that statewide tour? No, it's going to come from me and how uh, important it is for me to get this message out across the state to Republicans. Whatever I find out there is not going to be the ultimate decision maker. It's going to be coming from inside of me how important it is for me to get this message out about where the Republican Party should be, what our brand should be, and convince people to trust us. That's going to motivate me. All right, John Bramnick, state senator, maybe potential gubernatorial candidate. Good to see you again, man. Thanks for coming on. Thank you, David.